another one from vv ecmo a sharp fall in post oxygenator po2 with normal pre oxygenator saturation so what happens the blood which is deoxygenated is coming from our body it goes to the pump it goes to the oxygenator so till this time the blood is deoxygenated then the oxygenator actually improves the oxygenation and takes out the carbon dioxide and then the blood is pushed forwards so when we talk about normal pre oxygenator saturation that means whatever it was in the patient it's the same but the post oxygenator po2 should be very high if it there is a sharp fall that means there is some issue with the oxygenator which is also called as membrane lung so normal pre oxygenator saturation means the blood entering the oxygenator is adequately deoxygenated and not already saturated as i told you while a low post post oxygenator po2 means the oxygenator is failing so when we talk about oxygenator failing it can be due to membrane clotting plasma leakage or fibroid degradation so many are the things that can happen and we have to think about increasing the fio2 optimizing the patient and somehow we have to change the oxygenator in these patients and it is diagnosed by comparing the pre and post oxygenator blood gas and which we do it very frequently in the patients on vv ecmo which of the following bedside test most reliably detects diaphragm dysfunction in ventilated patients so diaphragm dysfunction is we are trying to detect that so the most common thing that is now being done is the ultrasound thickening fraction less than 20% so when we do a diaphragmatic ultrasound it is a standard bed cell tool for evaluating diaphragmatic function in the ventilated patients and we try to look at the two things first is diaphragmatic excursion the actual movement and diaphragmatic thickening fraction so these are the two things that we actually look at so when we talk about thickening fraction we do use a high frequency linear probe placed on the patient's chest in the zone that we want to measure it and we take measurements at end of expiration and end of inspiration we look at the diaphragmatic thickness so diaphragmatic thickness fraction is thickness at end inspiration minus thickness at end expiration about the denominator is thickness at end expiration and usually it is less than 20% is that that is a widely accepted cut off which tells us that significant diaphragmatic dysfunction is actually there so less than 20% strongly suggests dysfunction and predicts extubation failure and this has been studied in many studies and it is found to be more sensitive than the static vital capacity and comparatively non invasive compared to the phrenic nerve stimulation 